Hey guys, so this is a little thing that I'm doing. I'm just trying out Dungeon Alchemist as opposed to Dungeon Draft. Um, I've always used Dungeon Draft, but I'm using Dungeon Alchemist now. I want to see what it's like. I get some new maps I want to make. And frankly, I, I like the look of it. This is the before and after. You're going to see me making the map on the left. i got a lot more to come with it, but these are just kind of initial thoughts and how I enjoy it. Um, there will be a link in the description to download this map if you do wish to use it for some other reason. Or if you do actually run Tavern of the Lost, then I'll put both versions down below. Until then, let's get into the map making process everybody and see how it goes. Hey guys, so uh, this is the Dungeon Alchemist stuff here. Now you can see I'm first trying to figure out the you know number of squares and such I need. And I'm overestimating simply because I can always add more and it's easier to add than it is to take away in my book. So I'm building the general shape of the building and I do get an awful lot of confusion here. So I, I break out the book, I break out the maps and I'll be honest at the very end I just resort to doing what I was already doing. I look at the 4k monitor and I start counting. Yeah, you can see my hand going up and I'm just pressing that screen and counting the squares like a triple. So yeah, I'm doing it in little parts, and this is what I kind of like about this, you see that? That's there, okay? Done. And you can add little bits to what you're doing just by, you know, dragging in that section. One thing I would like, and this just kind of comes off of the back of, you know, this is a three-story building, and it's almost exactly the same shape. Copy and paste function. Like, copy and paste the whole room, you know? Um, I, I think that'd be really useful. But, you know... This is still in early access, and I'd like to point that out now. This is early access. I'm a big fan of early access myself. So yeah, as you can see here, just kind of building things up. I know it kind of seems like an awful lot of like, nothing burgers going on here, but it's, it's statements and such. You know, I don't have much to say at the moment. Because, as you can see, I'm just going through the, the map, the, the motions of it. Like, yeah, I've made a mistake here, and I've clocked it. So what do I do? I extend, I extend it out a little bit, you know? Now, obviously, um, this is based off of me making the calculations from the bottom layer. Uh, but, you know, that copy and paste function would have been really good, because I could just copy, paste, and then that's that. Solves it. Um, I'm sure there'll be more complex places where, like, it could be more useful, but right now, yeah. So I'm just changing the flooring up a little bit in this regard, um, air quotes flooring, simply put uh, visual differentiation so that way I actually know what I'm doing. It's like eye fatigue I suppose is the lack of better terminology, I'll get easily lost if it's not differentiated, I probably should go get checked. But yeah, so I'm deleting walls and what I'm going to do is once this is made and I've got the correct shape, I'll go back over it and it's going to delete every internal wall. But what that's done is it's reset it, so every external wall is now an external wall, and every internal wall is an internal wall. What that essentially means is when I go ahead to do like a final paint job, um, big air quotes for paint, but it means that everything will be the same. Um, you can see here now, start deleting walls, start doing the numbers, redoing this one here, it's a really weird room. And, you know, start adding my windows, and this is where, this is where things really kick into high gear really quickly, because... Once the windows are in and the doors are in, I can just start focusing on things as they come. So, you know, down here, I put a lot of signposts, do all the doors. You know, these doors are going to be there. Let's start in the bar because that's the first thing that's there. And one thing I didn't like is I, I like dark colours. I'm a dark coloured guy. But all these prefabs all seem to be light coloured. Um, the dark bar and such gives it, like, you know, I think it gives it a bit of character. Uh, it's just me personally. The light casks, however, you know, I have no issue with light casks because, again, you want to, you don't want everything to blend, but a darker bar, that prefab would have been really good. So, yeah, run up the kitchen and then quickly start doing things here. So, I saw some water, right, we've got the bathtubs. There's only three bathtubs to put in here, so we'll do that. But, in, you know, let's build this up, put in that little, um, that's a rug, man. Then the toilet, a little privacy screen so that we know we can see pooping. A little table with, you know, hand towel and then towels for coming out of the shower or the bath. This is the second story, by the way, so, you know, don't even worry about that window. Don't even worry about any of the windows. Now, this is one thing I like about this. See these stairs? That's great. However, the set of stairs that lead down, the first set, I get a 4x4 four four of them, or 3x3. Three three. There's nothing like that going up. That, that's really grinding to me, personally. 
I die. I wish it was more. But yeah, it's okay. Uh, we use the Steam Workshop because this has Steam Workshop integration where people actually post their models. Really good. And as well as that, there's also the models in the Discord. So yeah. Um, in the end, I do just find a way around it and I just I use a lighter colour. Um, it does kind of help in the end because it contrasts against the wall, which is really good. So it actually shows it from the floor to the wall stairs, but, you know, I'm, I'm just like that. I, I, I'm a dark colour guy, but I, I don't like dark coloured floors. <laughs> so yeah, this here kind of worked for me with how the stairs seem to operate. Um, it looks like there's a landing that would be there and then the set that comes up. So it's like a four piece set of stairs, which is perfectly fine. So yeah, I'm putting this in here and I start touching the scaling, see what I can get away with. A bar sits here, so you know, sorry about that, you hear me playing with my beard. Um, you know, touch up a lot of stuff in there. I'm wearing the same stuff in this video. Damn. Um, so it's a three story building, right? So it's going to have some pillars in there. It's not modern architecture, so I'll put the pillars in there. There would be lights on the pillars. And then just start evenly spacing the lights. I wish I could have made this um, hearth bigger, but you can't scale that. That's okay. I just threw some logs in there because, you know, a hearth would have that. Now, this place is classed as having a mishmatch of furniture, so them all being different is fine. Now, bright lights make it look good. Give it some darkness in some places, some light in some others. And then the 3D mode just to walk through. That's an excellent little addition. Uh, no idea where I could use it, but I, I enjoy it for actually taking a look at my map and being in my map. It makes me feel like a player. So yeah, stone flagstone floors, just because of how it looks in the original text. And then just start placing some prefabs, you know. I don't want to put too much effort into here, for lack of a better term. Um, you know, it's supposed to look dingy and old and like the last place you'd ever want to be. Plot reasons, of course. And you can see me just adding all these little f touches. An awful lot of things players won't see. Every time I've run this, no one goes into the kitchen. But, you know, you still light up the kitchen and still decorate the kitchen. You put steaks on the plate because, you know, it's there. I remembered the great sword, so I put the great sword in there because it's supposed to be there. Trap doors. I want to make it all look believable. That's, that's my thing, as long as it looks believable. And in comparison, yeah, this, this looks so much more believable because it's realistic. Yeah, that's here now. We're just doing the rooms, and you know, you got the big bedrooms, then you've got all these little ones with the bunk beds, and I can start taking assets from downstairs because downstairs is done, but a lot of assets are shared. So, yeah, to start doing the bathrooms first and foremost, towels and such, then just start copying and pasting and stealing from there, start putting down some lights and privacy screens, just make it look again, believably lived them. Um, I yeah, don't want to spoil too much of it, but, you know, it isn't really lived in. Um, so yeah, start doing the lights, I can always say continual flame spells and such with these open flames, it doesn't matter. Beds, rugs, storage chests, stuff on the wall, I actually forgot about that and I'm like, oh my god. Um, but like, I want it to look realistic. People put things on walls, Matthew. Um, like, photos and, you know. Back then, people would have mounted things like swords. You know, you got nothing on these walls. And I'm like, well, all these rooms as well. Rooms, regardless of where you go, a hotel, a tavern, a B and B, there is always a table in the room. So every room gets a table where possible. That little uh, room there doesn't get a table. Why? Because there's four bunk beds in there. You know, most of your stuff will kind of go in your chest, lock your chest. Make the beds look a little bit different, just for pleasure. You know, my. I think it looks better if they're all different colours rather than all being the same colour. Um, just a little bit of effort like that. Make it look a bit more believable, which I know seems really weird to say. Well, how could it be believable? Wouldn't if you run a B&B, you'd buy all the same stuff? Yeah, you would. But somehow in a fantasy setting, it's okay if they're a mismatch. <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, um, because of some overhang in the building and the way it kind of would work, some support beams outside. You know, just kind of how it is. It happens. Now we're building the final level. This here is the attic, and I have some issues here. It takes forever to load, um, so I hit Control S to save, and listen to a few songs. Nothing happens, so um, I, I just close the app, man. Open it back up. Do it again. Problem solved. This is the AI. That room populated with the AI. Probably not the best AI for it, but you know, 
it gave me an idea. It's a pub. It's a tavern. Yeah, there's going to be some mess up here. But there's probably also going to be old kegs, spent kegs. So yeah, we threw all that together, put it all in, just kind of make a place look like a mess, but also believable again. That's the whole thing here. And I know I'm harping on a bit more the map creation than the software, but by this point, you know, I'm racing. I have a grasp of the software. It's very powerful. It's very good. And it's only in early access, meaning it can only get better. Here, I exported with a .json. That .json gives me lights and walls for the foundry. So, like, that's amazing. Look at this. Absolutely fantastic. And, as you see, on the right is the old version, and on the left is the new version that we just sat down and watched. That was about three and a half hours work. Ah, I took about 20 minutes to myself. As you can see, one of those rooms is completely empty. Don't worry. Everything else is... Well, actually, everything is as it should be. If I were to change one thing, um, I'd probably put some different floors in. But, you know, that's why I put in rugs. So, yeah. Um, I do recommend you check out Dungeon Alchemist on Steam. I'll put a little link in the description. Um, yeah. I will see you all guys very soon. Do enjoy, and I will hopefully run this soon with the new map. Ta-ta for now.